Hey, I'm Adam Thompson. You'd like projects to work better in your organisation, yet whenever we try to get better at projects, it ends up in a big, template-infested, complicated thing. There's just a technique which you probably already know about, which if you use effectively, makes projects work a lot better. Let's get right into it. So we talk about projects getting better and out comes the Gantt chart. Now Gantt charts were actually put together by a dude called Henry Gantt, who was used by the US Army in World War I. There was a guy before Gantt, he called them harmonograms. It was a Polish dude called Karl Adamecki, but he was a bit late to the draw, so they're called Gantt charts to this day. Now Gantt charts, we've all seen them, I'll summon one in. We have along the top here, we have the dates. We have down here on the vertical axis, we've got the actual tasks that need to be done and the bars represent when the work's actually occurring. Here's the problem. These are meaningful for people who do project stuff all the time, in particular project managing all the time. They're not much use for us normal humans. And the other big issue they set up, due date. When you've got something due at the end of the month, when do you do it? On the second last day of the month. You, you know me, I've been uh, keeping up with my uh, JFK assassination theories. No one's getting in early and doing stuff because that's how we work as humans. So the Gantt chart itself can actually set up a situation where that all projects will be late. So let me give you an alternate. It's called the PERT chart and PERT stands for Program Evaluation Review Technique, which is pretty much the worst name you could think of for it, but the actual chart itself is really effective. Looks like this. First you have what done looks like, you draw that up in a circle. And then what you're doing is you're putting together the strands of the things that need to be done in order for the whole project to be done, which is gonna end up with something that looks like this. Looks a bit messy, that's the idea. You don't need to make these perfect because what we're trying to do is communicate how the whole project works as a system. But what I do is I actually put into the circles how long each one of these things is gonna take. So we know that the very first thing we need to do in the project is this thing over here. And then what we know is that this one's gonna take five, days, this one's going to take two days, that day, that one's going to take seven days. So what this represents is once we've done that, we can do that, but there's nothing stopping us starting this task as well. But we can't start this task or this task until we've done that task. So you see how it sets up the overall picture or the system of the project. So let's put in the rest of the amount of time in our theoretical project here, each one of these tasks is going to take. So 12, 8, 3, 2, and 1. How do you find these out? Get all the people who are going to be doing stuff or who know how much stuff is going to take into a room and ask them. Write down all the tasks that need to be done. You simply say what needs to be done for the project to be done. Put them all on a bit of paper. Get people to write on them how long it's going to take. Put them into a diagram like this. Do it together. What do you know? You might even get project buy-in. Now the key to it is this, we can now figure out how long this project is going to take. Of course your Gantt chart does this as well. This allows everyone to see how it works. How long is this project going to take? Well, if we go along the top path, it's going to take 18. Along the top path, 18. This path is going to take 24. And this path along the bottom is going to take 22. My boy's wicked smart. So what this means is our project, which is the critical path, is going to take 24 days because that's the longest path. 4 plus 12 plus 8 gives us 24 till done. So that means that if we're managing the project, we don't need to manage all the tasks. We only need to manage these, 4, 12 and 8, which means the people who are assigned those tasks are accountable for them. You ask them at the end of each day, how many more days is that going to take you to get it done? And when you do the maths, if it still means we're in there, that means we're going to come in on time and you can adjust accordingly. You can set a buffer at the far end of the project if you need to. We only need to worry about these ones if they're taking a bit of extra time such that it's going to threaten our grand total here. So you don't need to manage that line and that line as closely, which can take some of the stress off you. But for these people, ask them at the end of every day how much longer it's taking. And this is the power of the perk chart. Chance for OJ. Oh, what a man. Gary Perk. It's a simple way for everyone in the room to not only create the project system together, but everyone can visualize the whole project system at once. It's a powerful tool. For your smaller projects, you can knock it up in half an hour. For your medium projects, it can take 90 minutes. For your larger projects, dedicate half a day. You only need the Gantt chart for stuff where you've got huge budget things going in and all this resource balancing, all that sort of stuff. For most of the projects you've got going on in your organization, taking the time to do a quick perk chart to get things a bit more obvious to everyone is gonna pay big dividends. That's all for now. You can sign up to my blog, it's called Zen Organizations. You'll get an article that goes along with this video as well as the video to your inbox every week. I'll see you next time.